You might be shocked to find out that you don't need to go very far to get awesome color in your images in Photoshop. You don't need external plugins. You don't need much. Most of the color that you want is already in your photograph. So one of the questions I receive quite often in email is Blake, how do I get more color out of my images? Like I see the color that you get in yours. And I'll tell you, it's actually very simple and very easy. I'll actually show you real quick right now. I'm just going to grab some colors that are in this image and start painting. I'll make those blues a lot more blue. Look at how gorgeous those blues are. I'm going to grab the foreground here, make that a little bit brighter, brighten that up to follow that viewer right in. Grab this yellow here that we see right here in this foreground, maybe some of this green, paint in some of that green along these edges. And then up here on this mountain, maybe make my brush a little bit smaller, grab some of that red there and paint right on there. Now, as a painter, I really wish I had this kind of control to just see what colors were in the image and amplify those to make a gorgeous look in my photograph very quickly. There's the before, there's the after. Now you want to know how to do this? It's, it's very simple. It's one layer and just a couple brush strokes. So I'm going to pop over to this image here and I'll show this to you. So this is a very colorful image already. You're probably thinking, how did you get those colors to begin with? Like, well, this is actually an infrared converted camera from Calaria Vision. It's a full spectrum conversion and it has this special filter on the lens. It is an aerochrome look that I just love in my infrared photography. So how to make these colors more exaggerated and better in various different places is not necessarily an easy task. If you're trying to use something like an adjustment layer, like HSL or selective color, sometimes you just need to let the colors in the image speak for themselves and exploit them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a new layer here. And on this new layer, I'm going to change this from normal to linear light. Now this linear light blend mode operates on fill. So now I'm going to change that fill to about 10%. I like to make this a slow buildup process when I'm working with color. The linear light blend mode is a very special blend mode that does some very interesting things with contrast in the image, but even more specifically, it does it with contrast and color, which can produce some phenomenal effects in your photos. So now what I'm going to do is press B for my brush tool. Now I've got some of these custom brushes that I've built here. If you want to know how I built these in the description below, there's going to be a video. There will also be a video at the end of this that will link to these custom brushes. These brushes are phenomenal for uh, blending in color in your images. So I'm just going to grab this one that I call the soft blender. Now I've got my brush. I'm using a tablet for this. And what I need to do is I need to make a selection of color in the image that I want to exploit. So it's kind of like an interrogation. I'm saying you've got information right here. This blue information is interesting. I want more of it. Give me more of it. How do you get that out of your photograph? I'm going to press alt or option and sample that color. And that's actually going to be like a darkish blue color. Now, when this is set to the linear light blend mode with a fill of 10% with my blending brush, all I have to do is brush on those areas that I want to become more blue. You might not see it at first, but I'm going to go through this whole image and I'm going to show you this. Now I'm going to exploit this orange alt or option. Click on this orange color, brush that in along the sunrise there. Magically brush this in. Look at how gorgeous that's becoming. And you probably won't be able to tell right off the bat, but as soon as I flip this over, you're going to be like, what? That's incredible, Blake. And I'm going to say, I know. Um, now down here, I'm going to grab this orange. That's going to be a much brighter orange. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and brush down here to exaggerate that gorgeous reflection of that sunrise that we have over the water. Okay. Very nice. Now, when I do this, I'm going to turn this layer on and off so you can see it. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's subtle in nature, but very powerful and effective. You can also use this technique to offset certain colors. What I'm seeing right now is that we have the color blue here that is happening in my uh, snow. And I don't necessarily want that. But what I need to do is find a color that will offset that. Now I know that yellow offsets blue because on the color wheel, yellow and blue are across from each other on the color wheel. So if I add some yellow to that blue area, it will fix it. So I'm going to show you this again, new layer, linear light blend mode, drop the fill to 10%. This is where the magic happens. Okay. Now I'm going to make a selection for that color blue there, alter option and click it. So now when I've got that selected, I'll click on the color there and I'm just going to bring this down to the yellow, probably into the yellow orange area, like right around in there. I might even increase that to give it a little bit of brightness at the same time. So when I start brushing in this blue area, you're going to see that snow gets a lot brighter and it starts to cut some of that blue that we had there because I'm basically blending that blue with this yellow. Now, if I want a little bit more out of that, I can increase that fill. And as I increase that fill, you can see that it gets brighter because of how the algorithm is now being controlled with this color of yellow here. So I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller and I'll brush that right here on this snow right here. Okay. 
And I'm using a tablet here, so as I brush, I can increase or decrease that with pressure sensitivity. It's also looking pretty good on these little mounds, these little haystack little mounds that we have here too, to give them a little bit of color on top of them that separates them from that orange that I painted on top of there. And that's looking wonderful. I might even paint it up here on the top of this mountain here so it gets some of that light that's coming across this canvas and maybe even a little bit on half dome right there. And look at the difference here. As I said before, the color already exists within the image. It's a very simple technique. It's a blank layer with the linear light blend mode set to about 10% and then you just select colors in the image. I'll show you even on a portrait. So in this portrait, I want to make her skin tones appear a little bit more um, flesh-like instead of so pale-like. It might be because of the background that's pushing that away, but I need to resurrect some of that color in her face. So I'm going to make a new layer, change that to the linear light blend mode, drop that fill to about 10%. Here's where the trick happens. I'm going to press alt or option which will sample a color of her skin tone. So I'm going to sample right about here. It's about a medium skin tone color, maybe even a little bit darker. So it's not so pink. And then I'll just start brushing on those areas that I want to make a little bit brighter and have a little bit more life in them. I hear this question a lot, Blake, how do you control skin tones or how do you get more natural skin tones? Use the color that's already in the skin tone. Wow. Imagine that. <laughs> I'm just joking. And it's not, it's not an obvious thing. Okay. So now her skin it's a very subtle adjustment here, but look at the difference before and after. She's got a lot more life in those areas. And if you want even more of that life in that area, bring up the fill to see how far you can take it. Now, we obviously don't want to bring that up too high because the fill is going to make this look really bad. That's basically the algorithm control that's happening here. We want to keep this low. So about 13% will be okay. Let's say we want her hair to have a little bit more of that beautiful red color. Alter option, click on and sample some of that red. So I've sampled that red and then brush right on the same layer because it doesn't care if it's light or if it's dark. The linear light blend mode is a combination of linear dodge and linear burn. So when you add a color into there, if it's a dark color, it's going to add that color while increasing the contrast. If it's a dark color, it's going to add that color while decreasing that contrast. So it's kind of like color dodging and burning happening all at once. Now we could probably even do the same thing on her eyes. I'm, I'm venturing if we alter option click on one of those beautiful colors in her eye and then make our brush really small. And then we could brush around in her eye, which will also help get some of that beautiful color back in her eye. So if you thought that this was something that could only be used on a landscape image, you'd be wrong. It can be used on anything. One of the key elements to making this color work so well are these blender brushes that I've created. If you want to take a look at how these blender brushes are made, go ahead and click this video here. I might even have a free brush pack there for you so that you can exploit the color in images just like this. I'd love to hear some of your own color techniques. If you have any of those, please leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe.